Hey, Mr. Ryan. Promise you a video? Here's the video. You correctly noted the, uh, the, uh, anvil that I bought is, uh, not in an ideal shape. It's got a depression right here. Um, I wanted to make the point that this is about 135 years old. It's been mounted mul multiple times by probably multiple blacksmiths, so it's you can see where it's been mounted and moved. Because um, they would pound nails in and bend the nails over. And you can see where the nails are bent and, uh, and pressed in there on the legs. This is an Armitage uh, made in England sometime around 1880. Um, given the markings within about, say, five years, uh, some, somewhere. 1880 to 1885, and when I went looking for an anvil, um, almost all the anvils online were were a cheap, what you would call cheap knockoffs. They were substandard. They wouldn't stand up to actual use as an anvil, and obviously, uh, I'm looking for an anvil to actually use. So uh, I understand I'm going to pay more for it, but uh, this is actually quite a deal. It's it's underpriced for um, an anvil of its type, <clears throat> its type, its age, and its its condition. Uh, not by a lot. It, it bottom price uh, that I was able to find online about 160 or 70 bucks. I got it for 150 plus the drive, uh, under two hours. Um, but given that there's very little to pick from. I mean, you can look, but you might look for months or years. Many people do. Uh, I don't want a monkey around. I want an anvil. And uh, from my reading, uh, you really don't need anything special to start. You don't want to hold up blacksmithing just because you don't have the ideal anvil. Um, so, that being said, this is it. And this is the main reason why I aimed for one made by a, a known, reliable manufacturer, uh, and there's only a few of them. Even right now, there's only a few of them. And uh, the reason is the durability, and therefore the function, because in order for this to work as a, a place to work metal, and hot metal, is it has to be uh, hardened. And the hardening process takes superior metal. It can be cast, it can be forged, or a combination, but it must be hardened. And uh, the way you tell whether or not it's sufficiently hardened is the um, energy in, energy out. So if you hit this with a hammer, you want the energy to not dissipate but to come back at you. It makes it easier to uh, to work on. It's easier to hammer when the hammer comes back instead of you having to lift the hammer. You think about a hundred blows you might use just in one uh, part of a forge for a tool, for example, a hundred hammers is not that much. So uh, just to give you an example, this is hardened quarter inch plate steel and they both are on basically the same base. So if I hit this, it's kind of dead. It doesn't, it doesn't rebound the hammer at all. And if I hit this, it'll rebound. that the vibrations uh, stay for a certain amount of time as opposed to being completely absorbed. And when they're absorbed, you get a dull thought. 
For example, a really good example of a dull thud is concrete. It's nothing. Completely absorbed. So, I don't know if you can see the difference, but when I hit it in the area that's been worn down the most, it doesn't doesn't come back to the same force that it does over here. You can feel it in your hand. And you can hear the difference. Of course, if it's straight and level, it comes back straight. That's a big difference. Uh, there's not that big of a problem as far as the functionality. In other words, you can put a hunk of metal on there and make it straight. Um, it's it's really up to you if it comes off straight or not. It's not uh, within reason. It's not uh, a function of a little dip here, but I can always move around on the anvil where it's wet. So uh, that's about the anvil. Now I'm going to put uh, my uh, my four foot tubular steel. I'm going to put this in the garage floor after I build a place for it. And uh, that's what I'm going to put my vice on so I can pick it up and move it when I want to. I'll probably put at least two holes for it. And I'm going to anchor it with this here stuff, anchor cement. Uh, my research indicates that's that's what you want to use, not hydraulic cement, as some people online said. So, uh, this is another project I've been working on. Um, I'm working on the forge also. The forge, I have my uh, blower, it's an AC fan, I have my gas tank for, for propane. Of course, I have the 100 pound one, but this is more portable so I can move it outside. This is this milk can. That's going to be the forge itself, the body of the forge. And uh, I'm going to use refractory cement and fire brick uh, on the inside. And I may also include the fire blanket, which uh, is better holding heat. So I'll probably use that under cover is my plan. I don't have the exact dimensions and the shape yet. In my mind, I have decided I'm going to open it up on the top and hinge it so that I can access it and uh, also retain a certain amount of ability to, to hold the heat inside because the, the whole point is to keep you need 3,000 degrees you got to hold you got to hold the uh, heat inside sometimes you have to hold it more than other times depending on the size of the piece now if the piece happened to be just a little bigger than then this would hold that's why I want the ability to open it so I can put a piece in there and work a piece that's bigger than the diameter. And of course, the entire diameter won't be available to me because I'm going to line it. Um, and I'm going to have the chimney. I'm going to have a pipe coming in from underneath for the blower. And I need room for my fuel, which uh, is going to be propane, but it's also going to be uh, charcoal whether I make the charcoal myself or uh, uh, use the um, prepackaged. We'll see how that works out. But for 20 bucks, and the fact that this is not a forge and wasn't made to be a forge, that, that's what I like about it. So it relies on my ingenuity and my skill and tenacity, which is uh, which is what this is all about.
the uh, the items I got at the Oswego's um, Vocational Technology Conference Friday. Uh, gentleman, the chairman of the program at Alfred State, gave me these two uh, solar panels and this kilowatt device, and. I'll be bringing these in Monday into the facility, using them in the shop. Uh, he was very gracious. We had a really nice conversation, and uh, I'm very pleased that he thought I might be worthy of the gift bought by the taxpayer dollars, of course, because it was a grant. And uh, I don't know how many he handed out, but the box wasn't that big. It might have had four or six or eight at the most. So something I wish I had in the shop. And, I'm going to have it at least until the inmates break it. So that's all for now. Remember, it's all about the, the ring.